Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here and I am the Audiophiliac. I am uh, not excited today. No, the thing is that there's a subgroup, a niche within a niche of audiophiles who buy e equipment, expensive or not, and then never use it. Some of them never even take it out of the box. I'm, this is from my days as a hi-fi salesman where I would have customers who would buy a piece, let's say an amplifier or something, and then uh, not have anything else in the system, so it, they couldn't hook it up. And sometimes they would say, well, I'm gonna buy one really good thing, and then, you know, six months later, I'm gonna buy another, I'm gonna buy speakers, and then I'm gonna buy a turntable, you know. But some of these people never actually completed the journey, so they would buy these things. And sometimes if they had something of a system, but they were missing a part, I would say, let me lend you a thing so you can actually listen to all this stuff that you paid a lot of money for. And they yeah, no, it's okay. And it was weird. Like, there were people who bought, I remember a guy buying Apogee speakers that they stayed in the basement of the store that I worked at, Sound by Singer, and he never picked them up. They, it, it, this happened more than once. There were people that spent thousands of dollars for hi fi gear, and then for one reason, never came to retrieve it. That's very strange. But, you know, there's a, there's a, there is an aspect of gear love to the audiophile pursuit. You know, it looks really cool, the ideas of the designer and stuff. They're, they're, people buy it because of what it represents, what it is more than what it does. I, I think it really comes down to that. You know, tube amplifiers, they look so cool. Uh, you know, shiny Jadi amplifiers or something like chrome or polished stainless steel, whatever it is. Um, a Macintosh with those Macintosh things, blue meters and stuff. You know, it's like, um, it's his own thing. It's an object of, of beauty and uh, something to admire, I suppose. But listening to it is not necessarily the top priority of people who buy high-end audio. I once had uh, a deaf man buy a Lynn turntable with all the good stuff on this Lynn, and he was clearly uh, beyond not hard of hearing. He really couldn't hear much at all. And I said to him, where we communicated, that, um, why are you doing this? And he said, well, I, re I think it's cool. He said, I used to have hearing, I collected records, and I want to play records for my friends or my family and stuff. And he, I think more than anything, he, he wanted a Lynn. He wanted a great turn. This was like 25 years ago, at least. This is, it was a, it, it's what it represented, which is why he was buying that turntable more than the, the pleasure that he would personally derive from playing music on that turntable. So, what if us come in uh, different uh, flavors, clearly, you know, and uh, being around so many of them for so long has taught me a lot about them. And uh, I like them all. I relate to audiophiles. I clearly do. I am an audiophile, and I, I am the audiophilic, but I also am also an audiophile. And, um, you know, people collect stuff. People collect Corvettes. They collect baseball cards or beer cans or something, right? Some people collect audio, and the prime motivation isn't necessarily uh, listening to it. Just funny. Funny but true. Tales from the Crypt. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac, and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Comes up kind of daily, more or less, at least six days a week, uh, which is more than the actual Comedy Central Daily Show, which last time I checked is four days a week. I am way more daily than they are. Anyway, please subscribe if you like it. Uh, come back often, and I'll see you soon.